Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 119 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, this first one's a little out of order because I just got it this morning and I figured I might as well let you guys know in advance. That way you don't have to thumb through the, the different emails. Uh, it's called UK Flat Earth Convention 2019. Dear Mark, I am writing because I would be absolutely honored if you would come and speak at the UK Flat Earth Convention known as the Globe Lie UK Convention 2019 in September 13th through 15th. I'm able to fund your flight, accommodation, and food, and would be awesome if you could be with us. Roxanne and I are the hosts, and my good friend Charlotte is my right-hand woman with organizing tickets. You may already be aware that the Globe Lie 2.0 tour, organized by Jason Disbury, is coming through the convention on its UK leg of a 69-stop pan-European tour, and we aim to have our UK finale on the 13th. Here is a short promo I've put together on the event, link inserted, and I have earmarked a local venue for parties on both Friday and Saturday night where I will run a shuttle bus to and from the venue back to the Pioneer Center, which is a purpose-built conference facility. Please let me know if this is of interest and I will get the ball rolling with arranging your booking. I have a speaker form to complete if you are happy to come. We will look forward to hearing from you and if you have any questions, then please do let me know. Best wishes, Robin. Thank you for that, and uh, yes, I accepted this morning, and hopefully everything will be great. Uh, as you guys know, Flat Earth uh, 2019 is going to be a year of conventions. There are a whole bunch of them all over the place. There's UK, there's Toronto, Canada, there's New Zealand, uh, there's several in the United States, I think three that I know of. Uh, and including the, the um, Q Question Everything uh, conference, which is coming up in Los Angeles in less than a month. And uh, those are just the English speaking. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> one in Amsterdam. Uh, and those are just the English speaking ones that I know of. I mean, there's going to be a whole bunch this year. So thank you for that. Uh, let's get back to the regular emails. This first one is called WTF Nike is selling a full NASA tracksuit under Paul George's name. This is truly effing disgusting. Uh, yep, there's a tracksuit, uh, NASA men's basketball tracksuit. Uh, there's a hat from Nike. There's a backpack from Nike. And then there's a shoe. And that was sent to me by Eugene M. Rosa. And this was sent to several people. It wasn't sent to just me. It was sent to Jaron and David Weiss and some other people. But yeah, yeah, uh, NASA is doing whatever it can to promote uh, in, in every venue that they can. It's their, their, some of their last-ditch efforts. But we'll get to their real last-ditch efforts as, down the line. This one's called No Subject. Hey, Mark, I emailed you last year about taking the trip to Kennedy Space Center with my daughter. I'm back with my second daughter, Chloe, taking the fifth grade indoctrination trip to Kennedy Space Center today. Maybe I'll get a chance to ask some questions today without pissing too many people off. It's really hard to be here, but I'm here with my daughter's school, and my daughter knows about everything, so we're trying to just take everything apart. Funny thing, in the IMAX theater, they were showing a image of the Boeing 747 flying the space shuttle back and around. I thought it was a little ironic that it flew around the Hollywood sign. I have to be the only flat earther here. So they're building a new space station, Orion or something to go to Mars. It's not It's not a space station. It's, uh, it's part of a capsule system, but it doesn't really matter. It's all fake. Uh, to go to Mars or just be out in space and it's going to be an inflatable space station. Oh God. I'm pretty sure they would have some problems with the vacuum effect of space. An inflatable space station? Oh, please, God, please. Uh, too bad you can't be here to point things out. Everyone here is taking all this in hook, line, and sinker. I'm so amazed. That's a fishing reference, by the way. Yeah, I'm so, it's so amazing to see everyone in a deep sleep. Sincerely, LK at the National Animation Space Center. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, her name's Lisa, by the way. Wow. Wow, good stuff. This one's called Question About. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I tried to call you on the number you gave out in your Flat Earth movie, but the phone has been disconnected. 
Uh, not true. <laughs> that phone number has been my phone number for 20-something years. I l took it with me from Colorado. I'm guessing you were operating your phone machine wrong. Dialing the wrong number. It is 303-494-6631 for my cell, which is sitting right below me. And the number on this machine, this tower, is 720-897-6111. And you can call either and leave messages on either. My voice won't be on the tower because Skype, when it was bought by Microsoft, got rid of personalized voicemail, which I thought was so silly. It's like, how much hard drive space could you possibly save by doing that? What, what was happening that people are exploiting your system with personalized voicemail? So now it's just some British woman saying, you know, you have reached such and such number, but my voice is not on there. It, it freaks people out sometimes. Anyway, uh, my best friend and I are both flat earthers are really puzzled by something. Supposedly, I think Monday night here was some kind of super moon eclipse. Tuesday morning, I was walking my dog at 630 and took note of the moon. It was pretty big and bright and seemed oddly near the horizon. When I came back out at 730 to leave our work, the moon had traveled counterclockwise. And I mean, it was zipping along. And by the time I got to work, it had moved even further along again, all the time low to the horizon. Now I know how the moon moves. I know it does not go counterclockwise. So first I thought I am turned around. I'm facing north. So I did an experiment and turned in each direction, pretended. I was facing north and still concluded that whatever that thing was, was moving counterclockwise. And I mean very rapidly. This morning at the same time, 6.30, I took note of the moon and found it interesting. It was much higher in position and it was always, already almost a three-quarter moon. How can that occur in two days? I took note of also its position when I left for work. It was going clockwise, was moving, and it was a beautiful, normal pace. Do you have any thoughts on this, any ideas whatsoever? Feel free to call me. My friend and I are extremely curious. Sincerely, Carrie Allison. And yeah, I already called her. Um, and she thought she was going crazy. I was like, no, you're not, you're not crazy. You very well could have seen that. Uh, it, there's all sorts of weird things that I think are individual to people. I think a lot of people are instanced. And you're thinking, oh, that sounds metaphysical. No, 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 it's a software term. It's the realization of an object. It is sort of like the, um, the dress. Is it white or is it black? Two people standing next to each other looking at the same dress on the screen. One sees white, one sees black. Who's right? And it's like, well, uh, the, uh, whoever's right is what, whoever I agree with is what I see. So if you see black as well, you're going to side with the black person. If you see with white, you're going to side with the white. And I know this sounds kind of racial when I say that thing, but I'm, that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is, uh, and I'll, I'll leave it with this because, I mean, I could spend a whole show talking about this. And that is, we all know the, the term uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, it's not just that. Everything is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, everybody sees what they want to see or what the system wants them to see. Sounds kind of matrixy, I know, but uh, that, that's what I'm going with on this one. Uh, I'm not going to deny that she saw some weird stuff going on with the moon. Uh, the wonderful, was it the, oh God, was it the Fatima event? But with the three girls and the sun dancing around the sky for, for a long time. And it was like in front of thousands of people. The sun was dancing in front of the sky. Well, you're saying, well, how the sun can't dance in front of just just those people because they have to be dancing for everybody. It's like, nah, nah, not if it's individual to just them. Remember, if things are instanced, uh, then it's unique uh, based on a geographic region as well. Uh, anyway, sorry, get, it's get, getting a little weird, but it's, it's tough to explain. I'm not going to try to in, in this particular show. This one's called So Ridiculous It Might Work. Mark, so long distance observations and refraction, a combination test. Take a line anchor to the base of a lighthouse to set distance, take photo. If line is not in water, then object it were, it is, and not refracting up magically. It's random, but out of the box is what we do. Rob, staying ahead of the curve. Um, I have to explain that a little bit more. Combination, take a line anchor to the base of the lighthouse, set distance, take photo. If line is not in water, then object it were... Reword that for me. Help me out here. Send me some send me some drawings. This one's called Intriguing Info. Hi, I'm Mark. I came across this while doing some research on a different topic. I wanted to pass it along. It is about the particular type of broadcasting that occurred during the moon missions. They were using a particular frequency that needed higher power to transmit video images. Hopefully, I did not read the article incorrectly, but it seems odd that they would use this instead of lower frequency 
uh, uh, requiring less power. It may or may not have any validity, but I'm certainly not in the subject matter expert realm here, but it seemed to cast more doubt in that area nonetheless. Enjoy, Kirk. And uh, yeah, he's absolutely right. The big thing here is the television transmission power, which is, look, and you can look at any images you want. Batteries are extremely heavy. It's like, oh, no, it's one-sixth Earth's gravity. It's like, okay, batteries are also bulky, especially in 1969. They did not have the power, the physical amps, the voltage to generate the watts, to generate a signal that could reach Earth. Uh, any anyone in the television industry will tell you that the VHF transmitter that they were using VHF very high frequency uh, only had a range maybe maybe of 50 miles if you're lucky and yet they went 250,000 miles with pinpoint accuracy and were doing 30 frames a second with audio perfectly synced no not going to happen. I'm sorry. It, it, that, that alone should just crush the Apollo missions. Tell, so tell me, anybody in the science community, tell me what transmitter they were using in 1969 to broadcast 30 frames per second video. When in 2000, I couldn't get an image to download on my machine in less than 15 seconds. Any image. And I was using a, a 33.6 baud modem. Oh. oh, do not tell me. Uh, yeah, sorry, the Apollo mission, just every time I think of it, just the, the fact that everybody's believed it, face value. And I know, I know, I, you know, I can't, con shouldn't condemn anyway, because I was in the same boat as they were. This was called Springer 2018, when the Earth was flat, studies in ancient Greek and Chinese cosmology. Hi, Mark, reference to an interesting book published by Springer in 2018. Best, and that's from Rui. And he sent me, I think, the cover of it. And yeah, Historical and Cultural Astronomy, Series Edition, Wayne Orkishton, Dirk Kupri. So you can look this up if you want. Dirk Kupri, C-O-U-P-R-I-E, When the Earth Was Flat. Hmm. Huh, kind of cool. I like it. This one's called Distance We Can See Till Earth Curves. Mark, good day to you. How have you been keeping it? What is up? I'm hoping your response would be the dome. <laughs> Hope all is well. Asked my Google assistant, how far can someone in the Navy see to the horizon? A female robot responded with a screenshot below. That's from Flat Earth Paladin. Yes, because he's in my guild. Uh, let's see. Here's, here's, what, yeah, here's what I found. For a six foot tall person, the horizon is a little more than three miles away. Yep. Geometry tells us that the distance of the horizon is the farthest point the eye can see before the Earth curves out beneath our view. So depends simply at the height of the observer. Yep, that's what Google will tell you. And you're wondering why YouTube is starting to... Well, they say they're going to censor us, but they're not really censoring us as much as they're not going to recommend us as heavily as they are, but we'll get into that. This one's all called Inquiry, Please. Uh, this is from January 2019. Mark, I viewed your vids and am interested in learning more. So how do I start? Where is it possible to order a physical map you refer to as the USGS, Flat Earth Map? Thank you, yours, and the blessed hope, Don Reby. R-A-E-B-E. -E. And he just said it right there. All you have to do is type in Flat Earth Map and uh, click on, I think, sale options or whatever. Uh, you can, I mean, they're out there. You can buy them. Uh, the, the azimuthal equidistant map is not copyrighted in any stretch. So there's plenty of Flat Earth Maps out there. And if you want a three-dimensional version, go to, uh, I think Chris Pontius is still selling them, at flatearthmodels.com. And he's got a wonderful three-dimensional Flat Earth Map with a dome over the top with star systems. It's lit up. They're not cheap, but they are really, really cool. I mean, I don't care what kind of house you have. Uh, these things are pretty high-end stuff. And they come with a real remote control. And you can dazzle your friends with them. Okay, this one's called, I'm extremely new to this awakening and found you and saw this article today. Mark, I feel the need to share these articles and with the recent censorship, I feel blessed to have found you and pray others are still able to find you. God bless you. And that's from Giggles. <laughs> and then I giggled. Um, okay, so this one's at phys.org, P-H-Y-S. 
YouTube demotes flat earthers conspiracy theorists. Yep, another one. YouTube demotes flat earthers, yeah, and, and then news punch, uh, filter, censor, all. Yeah. Uh, what? What? It, and there's going to be a lot more emails along these lines. Uh, what they're talking about is the recent declaration by YouTube and the parent company Google. Might as well just say Google uh, to not recommend flat Earth so much to people on the sidebar. And I think it's mostly they're pulling back because of the overkill that they've been doing for the last several years. And we, we've seen various articles. Uh, the most notable one was by a developer that worked for YouTube who was who, who mentioned because people say, why, how, what's the algorithm to recommend things on the, on the right hand side? And he said, any out of all the topics he could have picked, he said, "Well, if a, if the average person uh, gets in that gets into flat Earth, watches twenty videos in a row of flat Earth, what do you think we're going to recommend?" And so basically, and we've heard this complaint now for a couple of years, where people are complaining that no matter what conspiracy they type in to YouTube, that flat Earth is always recommended on the right hand side somewhere. I mean, it's like JFK, Flat Earth, 9-11, Flat Earth, Sandy Hook, or, or, uh, Flat Earth, whatever it is, it just keeps popping up on the right-hand side to where people start complaining. It's like, look, we, and and of course, you know, the, the secret Flat Earth searches, which is uh, you've got one member of the family looking up Flat Earth in YouTube. Remember, YouTube remembers this stuff. If you, The cookies, they, they remember some of this. And so when somebody else goes into YouTube, all of a sudden you see all these Flat Earth videos on the right-hand side. It's like, why is there, why are all these Flat Earth videos being recommended? Don't know, I have no idea. So uh, they're going to try to, to uh, curb our enthusiasm. And they already have several times. You know, they've stunted the YouTube numbers, the metrics, uh, for the scoreboard uh, it's, uh, several times until the middle of 2018 and then they just ripped down the scoreboard altogether. If you're wondering what I'm saying uh, is Internet 101 when you type in a topic into any um, search engine, I don't care what it is, uh, uh, Firefox or Explorer or Safari or whatever it is, and you type in like let's say tractors, right? And it'll say search results equals, and we all know this, right? Search results equals this number. And you say, oh, you know, you've got, there's so many search result things you can click on. And YouTube had that as well. It had it since day one. And then in 2018, right after we reached about almost 21 million search results, they decided to remove search results. And I don't mean for just us. I mean, everybody, they, we ruined it for everybody. They tore down the entire scoreboard. So now you just see videos. That's it. And it doesn't matter what you filter by, the search results is gone. And I know it was an uber nerd decision, uh, whoever made it, uh, at, the, at the highest level. And I, I get why they did it. We, you know, they were trying to curb our enthusiasm. And not, nobody loved the, the stats more than I did. Uh, and some people say, you're delusional. They didn't rip it down for you. And I'm going, really? Uh, so why is it gone? It was, it was gone right after I made a video called Flat Earth Catches the President of the United States. And no, I'm not saying that Trump did it, uh, but we did. We had just caught him. Uh, in fact, I was it, it was even ahead of my expectations. I didn't think we were going to catch him for another six months. And then all of a sudden we had him 20.9 to 20.8 million. And I made a, you can go and look Truth Frequency Radio. And I made an episode called that. And then right after that, somebody messaged me and said, the numbers are gone. I go, what are you talking about? And in um, anyway, so let's get back into the emails. Uh, this one's called New Flat Earth Fun Slideshow. Hi, Mark. Thanks for sharing my email. We never know for sure if people will enjoy something like that. I hope so. I'm already working on Flat Earth Fun too. Let me know if you ever view the entire slideshow. I'm curious if you all like young voice guns, young voice guns, and movie redos like that. Uh, sincerely, Brett. All right, I will check that out when I get the chance. Uh, this one's called, They're Coming For You. And that's, that's an article linked to the dailymail.co.uk. Uh, uh, conspiracy videos says no longer user recommendations. Yeah, kind regards, Adam from the UK. Yep, lots of people are noticing that it was a big deal. I mean, if you type, this was major news out there. If you type Flat Earth, in fact, you can search for it right now. Type Flat Earth into Google and uh, click on the news button, you'll see it. Uh, you know, Google saying, "Well, we swear we're gonna we're gonna crack down on more conspiracy theories," and it's, it's boy, they're riding a fine line. Luckily for us, we make YouTube so much money, and they're saying, "How do you make money for YouTube?" It's because when remember, YouTube is a television network. It's currently YouTube is the biggest television network in the world right now, by far. 
No one even comes close. Uh, they have more programming. Think of think of all the networks out there, uh, just in the United States. I don't want to get into the whole BBC thing. Uh, but think of all the United States. ABC, uh, NBC, CBS, Fox, CNN. But the big, the big four, which are ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. Think how big those networks are and how many programs they have on it. And then compare it to YouTube. YouTube has millions of of programs that are uh, in various stages that are promoted. Uh, some are promoted heavily by YouTube, some aren't. But remember, the goal of any network is to keep you watching their network. And like the guy said, if you watch 20 Flat Earth videos in a row, and, this, and we've seen this time and time again, where people say, oh yeah, it took me two weeks to get through the Flat Earth programming that I wanted to get through dedicated meaning if you're watching youtube you're not watching the other networks you're not watching television you're not watching netflix you're not watching roku you're not watching itunes you're watching youtube and so flat earth generates a huge amount of interest so youtube's in this weird little thing uh, they're, they're kind of in a conundrum there where they they they'd love to ban it to to make some of their sponsors happy but at the same time People watch. Look, if you're watching Flat Earth and you're just glued to YouTube, that means you're glued to the YouTube advertisements and the glued to it and the YouTube um, uh, algorithms, and they want that. So they're in a tough spot. They they'd love to condemn it. So saying they're going to crack down on Flat Earth is one thing, and not recommending. I honestly, they don't have to recommend Flat Earth anymore. It, Flat Earth has gotten so big now that people can they just type in Flat Earth. It's it's jumped outside of internet. And so it's become this great story. And how many times have we seen it where people are out there just talking amongst themselves in the streets? Uh, it's not like, yeah, of course, the people are emailing it to each other, but they're talking about it outside of the internet. And once you get that far, well, you know, there's almost no limit of what you can do. Sorry. Moving on. <clears throat> this one's called New Fo Moon Footage. Uh, this is from collectspace.com. Uh, it's the, oh, it's a Sundance documentary, Apollo 11 documentary premiere. I have not clicked on this yet. Apollo 11 lands at Sundance with never before seen mission footage. What the hell ever. And the, and the, and the picture from the red carpet is a bunch of super nerds standing next to a guy in a, in a fake astronaut suit. Awesome. Really, really great. Thank you for that. And yeah, it's not going anywhere. New moon footage. Uh -huh. 50, 50, 60 years later. Where'd you find it? Where, where'd you find the new moon footage? What, what's it show? Uh, this one's called No Subject. Mark, just wanted to thank, thank you for your videos. Knowledge is all powerful. That's from Daryl Rogers in New Zealand. Very welcome for that, Daryl. This one's called Eternal Perspective. Thanks, Mark. This is a link to what? It's a link to YouTube. So what's the video called? The video is called. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's it's from Robert uh, Forch. Um, uh, if you spell his last name F O E R T S C H, and his channel literally is called Truth, all caps, and I'm already sub to it. And the video is called Question Everything. Uh, hashtag Truth Seeker. Hashtag NASA Lies. Hashtag Deceived. Hashtag Born Again. Hashtag Truth. Hashtag Robert Forch. And he was at the conference in Denver. I had a chance to meet him. He had uh, he drove his car out there and he was doing the whole water level experiment. So very, very cool. And I think he's going to be down at the QE Everything, Question Everything Conference, QE 2019 in Los Angeles at the end of um, next month. And I will be there as well. So cool. Thank you for that. I talked to him on the phone. This one's called Flat Earth and YouTube about to be censored like Alex Jones. Well, I don't know about that. Alex Jones was banned was banned but for everything. I mean, they shut down his Facebook. They shut down his Twitter. I think they shut down, uh, but they, they definitely shut down his YouTube. But that was for different things. It wasn't about Flat Earth, but let me read this anyway. Mark, if you would like to read the bit about Flat Earth in the article for us, please. Thanks, Mark, for all you do in Flat Earth on, oh, I guess the National Geographic video on the Salt and Sea test will be taken down too, huh? Yeah, it's a great point. If you're going to take, again, they're not taking down flat earth videos they're just not recommending them in the sidebar right now you're saying well it's a slippery slope to censorship eh, is it is it because remember they promoted us for two years straight at least in the sidebar just recommending us all the time 
I mean, you couldn't, you can't put a dollar amount on the the, the marketing that, that YouTube gave us for free. So don't just start lashing out at YouTube because they're uh, they're ramping us down. They don't need to promote us anymore. Uh, I kind of like treating it like a like a burn rate in marketing. Uh, they don't have to promote us as much because we're the number one thing out there. You say, no, oh, you're not number one. So really, <laughs> really, have you looked and seen what we've been doing recently? The, the, we've got so many videos out there now that they won't even allow the scoreboard to show how many videos they are. We were trending higher than almost every mainstream topic I could think of. And the only people that were higher than us before they tore down the scoreboard were, were you know, small time players like Taylor Swift uh, Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, people like that. That That's the only people who, because we already passed the president of the United States. We were crushing everybody. We were crushing NASA. Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't even come close. I mean, we were, uh, I don't want to get into it. But the article, let's look at the Daily Mail article. Uh, YouTube, yeah, I'll, I'll read just a little bit of this. YouTube to crack down. Um, oh, and now I've got advertisements all over the place. Hang on one second. Sorry, the, the, the UK site, there's just a ton of ads already. I mean, we got Star Trek Discovery, which is absolutely going over the top of the headline, and I can't click around it unless I click on ad choices, which I'm not going to do. Uh, and then, we, you know, so there's just so many ads in here. Good Lord, the whole thing is just plastered with ads. So, but I'll, I'll read just a paragraph. Um, we'll begin. We'll begin reducing recommendations of borderline content and content that could misinform users in harmful ways, such as such as they only picked three things right here, such as videos promoting a phony miracle cure for serious illness, claiming the Earth is flat, <laughs> or making blatantly false claims about historic events like 9/11. All right, tough call for okay. Three things, all completely different. One is you know hardcore, hardcore, hardcore conspiracy people, you know doing nine eleven. Like nine nine eleven was an inside job, right? Okay, so you're gonna reduce those, uh, re reduce the 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 recommendations for those. Uh, phony miracle cures for serious illnesses. Oh boy, how are you going to determine that? Snake oil has been around forever and there's a ton of snake oil videos out there. And then of course, claiming the earth is flat, which is okay. You're going to have to have dedicated machines not going to be able to pull this off. No algorithms going to be able to pull this off. How do you determine what's a pro flat earth video and what's an anti flat earth video? And do you, do you let in the anti flat earth videos or do you just run an algorithm and get, be lazy and say, okay, anything that mentions flat earth a whole bunch of times, because the trolls, they mentioned flat earth more than we mentioned flat earth. So in just about every sentence, you know, flat earth is dumb. Flat earth is retarded. Flat earth is ridiculous. Are you going to ban? Again, you're not banning them. So I shouldn't say that. Uh, YouTube says the decision affects less than 1% of videos. <laughs> no, uh, but this will still impact millions of clips. We think this change strikes a balance between maintaining a platform for free speech and living up to our responsibility to users, which is completely undefined there. Uh, however, it will not ban the videos. They can't. To be clear, this will only affect recommendations of what videos to watch, not whether a video is available on YouTube. Yeah. And again, if they if they want to turn it, they want to yellow flag them, and turn them into uh, videos that don't uh, don't get revenue. That eh, might change a little bit of it, but I've seen way too many channels talk about flat Earth that aren't monetized at all. Remember, I wasn't even monetized for like the first six months. In fact, I wasn't monetized until YouTube contacted me directly and said, <clears throat> "Hey, look, uh, you're getting a lot of hits." Because remember, YouTube makes again. It comes down to YouTube making money. They contacted me and said, we we would like you to monetize because we want to make money off your videos, which, you know, it was a win-win and it worked. This one's called Got to Love This. And it's another video link. Guys, if you send me a video link, please send me what it is. I don't mind clicking it. It's Blue Marble 3.0. Yeah, it was a drawing of, uh, and it's from Flat Earth News and Reports. And uh, that's, that's the channel. So check it out. Blue Marble 3.0. How it was built, no doubt. Kind of like Blue Marble 1.0. Or Blue, I'm sorry, Blue Marble 2.0. So 1.0 would have been the NASA uh, just airbrushed image from Apollo 17, otherwise known as the original Blue Marble. Blue Marble 2.0 was the one that Scott Simmons, Scott Simmons, I think it was his name. Uh, can't remember his name now. 
uh, that built it for the the NASA engineer that built the very first background screen for the the iPhone, and he I think that's what was called Blue Marble 2.0, and he, that was completely photoshopped. I mean, utterly photoshopped to where the the southern hemisphere is just clone stamped to to no end. It's like again, I just kills me. It's like so you're building the very first background for the iPhone. And you are going to be, uh, what did he finish this on a Friday? It's like, oh, I got happy hour to go to clone, 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 just clone stamped all these clouds down the Southern hemisphere and people are noticed it. It's like, what the heck? It's like, that that's the pride in your work. Awesome job. Seriously, man. Moving on. This one's called your response to YouTube. Uh, yeah, my response to YouTube is kind of what you've heard so far, which is the, the YouTube censorship isn't quite censorship the media would love to make it you know because the media hypes it up and and says oh yeah they're gonna shut them down no they're not shutting them down the the uk story which was really the first people to break it uh they they were quick to say no they're not banning the videos because you can't it's a free speech thing and look youtube's all about free speech it's a slip slippery slope and you don't want to be a company especially nowadays i mean everyone's so hypersensitive to everything because what gets banned and what doesn't so you're not going to ban anything you don't want to recommend it on the sidebar eh fine you know there's so many there's so many youtube videos out there and again what d marble was saying recently you don't even have to put flat earth in the title if you don't want uh, now they'll probably uh, do some sort of um, voice pattern recognition where they're gonna you know listen for the sounds flat Earth. Uh, but if you want to do it just off the title, there's tons of versions you could put. But I I always encourage people to put flat Earth in the title because that's all I search for is I search for flat Earth, and a lot of people are gonna search. So until I mean, and you'll see it, you'll know when it happens uh, because there'll be people that'll put up like big channels will put up videos on flat earth and they won't get any hits because they're not going to be recommended at all. But there's so much content out there. I'm not going to sweat it right now. I, and I've heard this before. Look, remember Congress came back at us and said, oh yeah, uh, we, we, we're putting wiki links buttons below the videos so that people can click on, you know, scientific wiki links because science is, is really running scared right now. Uh, so I'm not sweating it at the moment. I mean, again, everything's moving forward. We're getting bigger and bigger. And plus, we're jumping outside of the Internet at this point, you know, between the conventions and the street activism and just the word of mouth that what are you going to do? How are you going to stop word of mouth? You're not. This one's called John Kerry Flat Earth Society. Hey, Mark just watched John Kerry in an interview on PBS compare the representatives in Congress that don't believe in his climate change propaganda as members of the Flat Earth Society. Yep, that's from Chris Irvin. Thank you for that. And what we also have been seeing for the last couple of years is, deliberate or not, the the term flat earth has been put, inserted into the media almost artificially, where uh, there's three levels of, of, of mental state, which is, okay, you're crazy, you're totally insane, or the third and highest level now is flat earth. Because you don't believe in any, you know, you don't believe in all this stuff. And the media likes using it. It's like, oh yeah, Flat Earth. I mean, it's partially because of the whole Obama, uh, you know, we don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. You know, that thing. He, that that caught, you know, the, those sound bites were, were gold. Uh, but now everybody, uh, all the media are using this. Every time they use it, it just, it just keeps throwing it in their heads, people's heads, to where they, they look it up. And remember... Just because it's not recommended doesn't mean it's not going to show up if you type in flat earth into search. So you type in flat earth into Google or you type in flat earth into YouTube, you're still going to get a ton of flat earth videos. You know, that's not going to change. It's just if you're typing in JFK, will they recommend flat earth videos to you? Honestly, they probably shouldn't have been in the first place. But remember, YouTube is based on, okay, what's the most popular thing out there? So now they're trying to reduce the popularity, but again, comes back to the money thing and we go round and round. This one's called, Hola, ¿cómo estás? Espero que estés bien. Y co- oh, wait a minute. This is all in Spanish. Oh, there's an English translation below. Dear friend, how are you? I hope you are fine and in good health. My name is Katie. I am contacting you for a serious business partnership. I need your urgent response because it is very important. Thanks in anticipation of your response, Katie. Uh... Uh, Well, gracias, Katie. Thank you for uh, sending me an email in both Spanish first and then English. Uh, But um, you didn't say what it was about. 
So I'm sure it's completely legit. I'm going to spend at least an hour writing back and, and doing some correspondence with her. This one's called Rocket People Are NASA Smarter Than Me. No way. Mark, some say I am smarter than a calculator. <laughs> But NASA people are the calculator. They are smart rocket people. Launch TV signals over my home. I always wondered what the TV signal beam looks like. I ain't never seen a Wi-Fi signal. There's there's no punctuation here, guys. Go into my home. NASA spelled N-A-Y-S-A. People keep putting up flying metal, which not one ever came down to the grass or water. How do NASA predict the weather? It's never accurate. I've tried watching Apollo 13 over a hundred times. <laughs> Trying to figure it out. I don't get the idea behind faking Apollo 13. Please help solve my calculator brain. Thank. <laughs> he said thank, not thanks. That's from Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Um... Okay, Apollo 13, why would you fake why would you fake a disaster on Apollo 13? Because they were trying to see if uh, America was even watching at that point. Uh, they they did a really good job at downplaying the moon missions. You know, they fired went up there like six times in 3 years. I mean, ridiculous schedule, no problems. And you know, but yes, Apollo 13, uh, uh, you know, big drama. Never landed. Had to do a MacGyver thing on the air conditioning system and the oxygen system and scrubs uh, the CO2 and made it back. Nobody died. Nobody was even injured. So why why fake that? Just to just to add a little drama into it. They knew exactly at that point. It's like okay, we can wind this thing down. Nobody cares, which was amazing considering there was only three networks of television: ABC, CBS, and NBC. So it worked really, really well. I mean, they, they went and then in 1972 said, yep, that's it. We're not going back. Good night, everybody. And that was it. Nobody ever went back from any country. No, uh, no, no, no prospects of it. People have been saying literally since the Reagan era, oh, we're going back to the moon. Nope. Never. Been. I mean, every president has said that or recommitted going back to the moon. And that's all people have to hear. It's like, oh, we're going to go back one day. Uh, it's 2019. Nobody's going. Nobody's even talking about going from any country. And now we've got countries that can clone our technology and nobody's going. Why aren't the Chinese there? So Chinese supposedly have a, a rover on the far side of the moon right now. And, a, and one on the cl close side of the moon, not broadcasting anything. Why? Because they can't because it's not there. Uh, seriously, watching Apollo 13 a hundred times. Why don't you watch First Man now? I mean, First Man finally came out. That I mean, it had to. Uh, the the movie with Ryan Gosling, which was interesting, because it was a Canadian production, Canadian actor, Canadian director, Canadian production team made the American Moon movie and removed the American flag from the movie because they said it's a human achievement, not an American achievement. To which I say, and you guys have heard me say this before, oh no no no, if anyone should get credit for faking the moon landing. It should be the Americans and just the Americans. This one's called Question. Mark Ben the Brit here. I rang you a few months ago and we chatted about my buddy the pilot who says they plot, plot routes on flat earth maps and the family friend who is a geologist and after 40 years admits something doesn't add up. My question is this. What do you make of Stephen Greer? A lot of this stuff makes so much sense other than the fact that he seems to think we are a planet. Any thoughts? Keep up the great work, and I hope uh, you figure out figure a way around these efforts of censoring. Shows the FE movement is winning. Best Ben. Uh, I really don't follow Stephen Greer much. I, I looked at him a while ago, and yeah, as long as he believes in we're on a planet, no, nothing I can do for him. And no, I'm not, again, I'm not knocking guys that are into alternate theories, but if you still believe in the in the heliocentric model, if you still believe in the solar system and the planet, you gotta get around that. Uh, which is why uh, the, the the creators of the movie, The Principal, uh, I thought he was close, uh, which was that w when they made that movie, uh, that he said that the world was the center of the universe, but he still believed in a, a, in a universe, in a solar system. He's close. He just hasn't gotten far enough. This one's called Plain Et. Hi, mate. Thanks for your work. You could put the images in my head so I could get it. Many thanks. Have a yarn to Santos 
Bonacci. He's an Aussie. Patricia chatted to him. I reckon you two could make magic happen. Oh, me and Santos? Uh, Santos doesn't like me for whatever reason. I, that's fine. Again, I don't mind. As long as you believe in Flat Earth, I don't care if you like me or not. Uh, I agree with everything he was teaching, but Flat Earth. I thought... <laughs> I'm not going to say that word. Uh, poor sod. How about that? Uh, it's a globe. Uh, ha ha. Then you happened. Many thanks. Yeah, and that's from Marcus. Hewitt and uh, glad I could help and I'm sorry I ruined your life uh, same thing with Rob Skiba's um, slide that he put the, up there April of 2015 the the day that Mark Sargent ruined my life this one's called Robitussin Flat Earth Commercial 2018 yep you guys can look it up Robitussin Flat Earth Commercial 2018 it's, it's cool it's a Flat Earth reference awesome so definitely check that out this one's called Answer is Proof Positive Mark it is possible to see the effect of the curvature of the Earth from sea level, ships disappearing over the horizon, to actually see the curvature directly, i.e. to be able to see the horizon as an arc rather than a straight line, requires an altitude of over 50,000 feet. Is it possible to see the curvature of the Earth from sea level? Uh, and that's from The Guardian. Oh, it's a story from The Guardian. Huh. It is possible to see the effect of the curvature of the Earth from sea level, ships disappearing over the horizon. So I don't think this guy believes, basically. Oh, no, wait. Or is he just reported? It doesn't matter. He's reporting The Guardian. The Guardian's spreading that stuff, which is interesting because The Guardian is also doing a documentary on Flat Earth, which should be released in the next couple months out of the UK. It was a UK version uh, of, of a documentary. There's been multiple versions of documentaries that have been, that have been floating around recently. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to The Guardian one. This one's called John Sally, retired NBA ESPN host on Vlad TV. Mark. Uh, John Sally, former NBA star and current ESPN host, was on Vlad TV recently. While there, he discussed many topics. One segment, he spoke on his moon denial beliefs, followed by in all the planes he's taken, he's never seen the curve. Yep, absolutely. You guys can check that out on uh, Vlad TV, V-L-A-D TV, John Sally. And I'm sorry, that was sent to me by Virgil. Thank you for that, Virgil. This one's called New Convert. Reaching out with some questions. Greetings, Mark. Thank you for the excellent job you did in presenting a solid case for Flat Earth. I was wondering if you happened to watch 60 Minutes on Sunday night. A very interesting segment on Planet Labs, a private company, probably DS creation like Google and Facebook, that was a subtle shot at anyone questioning the NASA Globe narrative. The men running the company say they are former NASA employees, because yeah, that helps them. Uh, there are links to the company in 60 minute segment. Yep, it's a wiki, wiki. There's a wiki entry for Planet Labs and the CBS News. Yeah, the story is called uh, Private Company Launches large, Largest Fleet of Satellites in Human History to Photograph Earth. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I learned about the trick photography with special lenses and photoshopping the official images NASA presents as their best shot of the Earth. The accidental leak of Neil Armstrong working so hard to get a shot of the Earth. That would perpetuate the narrative was the icing on the cake for me. Why go through all this trouble if the narrative is true and we flat earthers are the nutcakes? I am an old lady, 71, that's actually younger than my mother, uh, with two degrees in geography. I drew maps for a living. I studied aerial photography, cartography, but it was all back in the mid-1960s, and tools were not much better than from 100 years ago. Then GIS made our life simpler. Uh, <clears throat> Strayler provided his six proofs for why the Earth is a sphere, and that's the introduction to physical geography, second edition. I can remember asking myself, why would this have to be done anymore? Why no update from Alan Shepard's flight into orbit? Surely photos were taken, and would we be and we would be provided with this information in the year of 1966, and no mention made. I was left to ponder that until this day. If there have been so many major space shots, where are the photos and videos of the spinning Earth? Yep. Why is everything a Hollywood creation? I asked. Uh, I hate asking question questions when I never get answers, even though the facts are there. I have read the Bible many times and could never reconcile what I am reading in Genesis with what I was being taught throughout my young life and then reinforced with ad hominem attacks against anyone who questions anything. Politics turned me into a curmudgeonly, curmudgeonly, it's a great word, skeptic, and that is the only reason I even took the first step clicking on a Flat Earth YouTube, Brian Lambert. I hate being lied to after 
all. It is one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not bear false witness. Hmm. It's true. I am drowning in false witness, but you have provided me with an extension to my snorkel. <laughs> Thank you. And that's from Sue Remmer in Battle Creek, Michigan. Cool. Thanks, Sue. It's called Science is Always Right. Mark, I have attached a image to prove it. That's from Rob. What do you send? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. it's from Popular Science Magazine, January 1963. Disposing of used engine oil, right? This is Remember, 1963 is not that long ago, guys, right? Uh, that's a little bit before I was born, but not much. Uh, it, it can Disposing of used engine oil can be a problem. Solution, dig a hole in the ground with a post hole digger and fill it with fine gravel. Then pour in the oil. It will be absorbed into the ground before your next change. Cover the spot with soil. <laughs> Environmentalists are going, no! <laughs> but it's so true. Page 166 from Popular Science Magazine, January 1963, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's what they used to tell people. Look, I'm, I wasn't kidding when I said, you know, when people say, you know, why aren't you down in the Antarctic? You know, why, why aren't people down in the Antarctic? And they say, oh, environmental reasons. I go, not, not back then. Environmentalism wasn't a word in uh, even as, as late as in, you know, 1960 when the Antarctic Treaty was uh, shortly ratified. Uh, environmentalism wasn't a thing. We poured motor, motor oil straight into the ground. Popular Science Magazine, the leading periodical in science, said, oh yeah, just pour the oil into the ground. Uh, thank you for that, Rob. That one tickles me. This one's called Watch. Why does YouTube censor Flat Earth? Simple workaround on YouTube. Yep, and that's from uh, D Marble. D Marble, of course, uh, staying ahead of this thing. Uh, he's, he's, he'll make videos where... He, or again, you can also change the video titles after you've made them. And so it'll be tougher for me. Oh, what do you want, cat? Seriously? Really? Eh, hang on. Yeah, that cat has perfect timing. Okay, this one's called... We'll do a few more. Uh, this one's called what else flat earth. Hi, Mark. Congratulations on your effort to get the truth out. I particularly liked your talk at the 2017 flat earth conference. 2017. Anyway, 20, 2018, maybe eh, 2017 work too. Anyway, why I'm contacting you is about a couple of things that have been playing on my mind recently. The first springs from the news a while back, supposedly successful landing on Mars. This got me to thinking, how do you navigate in space? Mars, we are told, is traveling at about 50,000 miles an hour. I don't know how fast the rocker was supposedly traveling, but I don't think it's anywhere near that fast. It's not. Uh, it, it, even if you believe mainstream science, I think it's less than 20. Uh, it supposedly took six months to get there, so in that time, Mars had traveled quite a bit, about 216 million. If my math is correct. So where exactly do you aim the rocket at? Yeah, you supposedly have to aim it ahead of it. You have to aim at where the planet's going to be, not where it is. Absolutely. Uh, uh, because if you're an hour late getting to where Mars is supposed to be, you'll have missed it by a tidy distance and you're not traveling anywhere near as fast as the target, so you can't catch up. How does the rocket know where it is on its long journey? Well, there you go. I mean, they, we're talking about amazing ballistics. You've, you've, I mean, it's a lot of math, basically. There is no GPS system up there. I did watch a YouTube presentation which claimed to explain it, but all boiled down to that they were used some really fancy scientific equipment, which didn't explain anything. The other subject that got me thinking is lunar eclipses. Am I right in thinking that a total lunar eclipse, the shadow from the Earth completely covers the moon? If so, how does this compare with the size of the shadow cast by the moon on the Earth? Yes, absolutely. I, that was part of my speech that I did in the, um, uh, the conference in um, Alberta, Canada which is uh, the 70 miles wide shadow blackout zone. So why don't we see a blackout zone on the moon? Because remember, the Earth is only four times wi wider than the moon. Then the blackout zone should be 250 miles, roughly. So why don't we see that blackout zone? Nope, we see a complete blood red moon. We do not see the blackout zone. Why not? Uh, let's see. If you do get time minute to answer my questions, it would be much appreciated. Also, I think you could challenge Brian Cox to join you in a spacesuit vacuum challenge. He'll never do it. Uh, I'm sure with his BBC connections, he get all organized for you both. I'd love to do it, I, which is why I've said, look, I'll, I'll go into a vacuum chamber, but you better put somebody else in there with me. And remember, the, the key here is, and this is how they will, I almost guarantee if somebody finally challenges me this year and puts me in a vacuum suit, it'll be tethered. 
meaning it won't be a, a self-contained suit. It'll be a pressure suit. It'll be, you know, it, it doesn't count if it's tethered to the wall. It's got to be unplugged. Remember, the astronauts in Apollo in 1969, they weren't tethered to anything. They were just walking around. So how? How? How is it working? Let me know. A few more, then we'll call this one good. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. Wow, I, I hadn't had a lot of survival guides recently. And you guys really should get a survival guide. Give it death free. Thanks, Mark. Uh, did you forget to the, attach the survival guide? Am I missing this? Uh, Joe. Uh, yes, I did, apparently. I forgot to send you the survival guide. And that does happen. I know it's a rookie mistake and you hate to see it. But every once in a while, even I forget to attach things to email. And I say, hey, look at this. And then people write back and they go, well, were you supposed to send something? This one's called The Titanic. Dear Mark, thumbs up to your channel from South Africa. I've been wondering if the Titanic actually hit a jagged part of the ice ring wall of Antarctica instead of an iceberg. Do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, no, because the Titanic was in the north. Remember, the, the, the Titanic in incident was um, traveling to the United States from uh, the UK. So, no. Uh, will you reply privately or must I listen to your Q&A show to get your thoughts? Uh, when will your next Q&A show be best regards, Naomi? And I will respond to this person and say, I, I'll, I'll give them the Q&A show. If you guys want me to do that, I will. Uh, if you don't want to listen to the entire show, I'll say, um, or all the shows, I'll say it is on QA such and such. I'm not going to give you a timestamp though. It's in 15 minutes and 30 seconds into QA 117. No, I will not do that. Uh, but anyway, sorry. Yeah, the Titanic, that's in the north. That's not, it's not, it's in the inner rings. It's not in the outer rings. This one's called SpaceX Hopper Blew Over by Wind. The SpaceX BFR Hopper was tipped over by wind. Uh, there's leaked images. Maybe this is why uh, NASA never launches rockets when there is wind for fear it will tip over the fake rockets. Also look at the BFR images. I attached it looks so fake yeah that looks like a terror that's a ter that cannot be a real rocket that cannot be a real rocket that I've seen 50s movies I mean is it's like it's straight out of a 50s science fiction movie yeah yeah not buying it look at some some people look that up SpaceX hopper I'm serious I've, I've that cannot be a real shot it's terrible all right, can we do one more? Maybe two more. This one's called Agenda of the Global Elite. Mark, unknown to most, this agenda of the Illuminati, a secret society of world leaguers, leaguers, leaders and global elite has been going on for some time. Their plans to enslave humanity has been a long process. But as you can see, many of these plans have been and are being implemented currently. Whether or not you believe this is not my concern, I'm simply throwing it out there. For those with eyes to see and ears to hear, the link below the video is where the document originates. And if I click on this link, it says, what you must never ever know. And that's from a plain truth.info. And I might actually subscribed to this one and they got 220,000 subs. That's, that's impressive. That's really cool. All right, last but not least, let's, let's end on a fun one. Mark, I'm hoping to create a character on your server so I can join the guild. Let me know if there's a race or class we need for group purposes. Thanks, Hunter. And he gives his phone number. And I will write back to him and I will say, yeah, absolutely. You guys want to, in your spare time, because as you guys know, while I'm waiting for videos to compile, I'm, I'm anchored to this machine most of the time. But while I'm waiting for stuff to compile, I'll fire up Warcraft, which is I've been playing off and on for 14 years. Uh, and, uh, and yes, I, we have a guild. It's actually called flat earth because I, even when I'm gaming, I like to spread the word. And, uh, so if you want to join the flat earth guild, it's on the stone mall server and you know, it's a casual guild. We don't do any hardcore raiding or anything like that. Uh, but you know, if you want stuff, I'm, I'm pretty loaded on that server. I'm one of the, I've got more gold than most people just because I know how to work it. Uh, anyway, that's it. So thank you guys uh, for emailing me. Remember, you can shoot off your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, stay flat.